at the Lynch Craig again with a, an unboxing of the Le Leopard 2 Revolution 1. This was a lovely surprise for me this morning. Didn't know nothing about it. He knows who it is who sent it. So thank you very much. So, <laughs> so without uh, without um, I think let's get on with it. So as you can see the box art is quite nice. It's just giving you a bit of information of the country it's made, the manufacturer. Uh, let me read what it says. Crafts Maffle and Main Battle Tank Torsion Bite 60 tons. Just the inf general information on the tank. As you can see it's just a uh, bit of that glare a little bit. There we go, better. As you can see it's quite a nice box art. There's a bit of information on the uh, on there you can see. Quite nice, nice, uh, nice pictures on the ends. It's just the usual sort of fair. And it's actually yeah, it's a Tiger model. This is a second Tiger model. I have the uh, Brennus as well, which is fantastic quality, which I still haven't started yet, but um, I will eventually. And this is another well, I've never really looked in the box yet properly. Um, so this kit number is uh, 46, sorry, 4629 and it's um, a Tiger model kit, not a Tiger tank, a Tiger model kit. Uh, on the sides we have a bit more of information about the tank, an overhead review of the tank and a bit of information again about the revolution of it. And we have the, uh, the decals and a bit of the P parts. There's nothing on the back, and on the other side we have some more callouts of the front again, just the same. Bit of information, all these MIG paints by the looks of it. So I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think there's three or four different variants, well, various colour callouts that you can use. And then again, just a bit of information again on it. Kid info. You can read that. I'll leave it there for a second. There we go. So, without further ado, let's have a look at what we've got inside the box. Right, first things first is we have the uh, destructions. Nice booklet form. Nice booklet for which I do like. I don't like one of these pages out of millions of bloody folds. As you can see, it just starts off generally with the uh, making of the wheels as normal, and the lower low hole, attaching the um, suspension arms. It's work workable suspension as well, which is pretty neat. I've never actually built one with workable suspension, so this is a first for me. Um, so we shall see how that goes when I do get round to building it. Uh, wheels, putting the wheels, obviously I won't be doing all this as in order, making the track, obviously that's one of the last things I'll probably do, it's got a little jig for making the track, I think they're in four parts, three, three, three or four parts of the track if I'm not mistaken, you've got the, uh, and that just shows you how to build it in blocks of five and away you go, but that will take some doing. And then we're on to the, still in the upper hole, um, put a few of the side skirts on, on the sides, uh, attaching it to the uh, lower hull, which I probably won't do at that stage either. And then we have building of the uh, wing mirrors, uh, cockpit door, and then a few bits more bits and pieces on the uh, upper hull and on the uh, on the rear of the hull as well for the uh, attaching them. All the stuff onto the rear hook, onto the uh, rear plate at the back. Very straightforward so far, he says. Let's okay, get fingers are all fingers and thumbs today. And then <coughs> <coughs> Oh dear. I'll get so look. Coming out with a bit of flu, unfortunately, but there we go. And it's, it's carrying on with the upper hull again, more attachments, you've got the uh, rear parts again onto the upper hull. A lot of PE on these parts here, and you have to make a, cut them out and make them into a circle. Ah, oh, dear me. Uh, 
And again, more upper hull stuff and the core cables and more PE. And then we have the uh, the cages, whatever they're called, around the rear, rear of the hull and right up at the lower hull. So, and then we start with the gun. Unfortunately, it's a two part. I was hoping for a metal barrel like the Brenner's had, but. I think with the kit, I think I probably I might treat myself to one of the uh, metal barrels if there's one available for it. If not, I'll uh, I'll have to use that. That looks fairly straightforward. Nothing too complicated in that. Uh, there again. To so start with the uh, underneath, this is the inside of the hull. It's just telling you to put a few things in there. A lot of the um, view view view. Uh, view, uh, a little bit of that, viewfinders and things like that and there again starting to attach the upper hole to the lower hole with the gun fairly straightforward looks like big bloody one single part bloody hell and then we have a few more bits and pieces P and uh, little bits and pieces onto the top of the hole onto the top of the turret and then more stuff on top of the turret quite, you know, it's quite intense the top of the turret has got loads of stuff on it uh, more PE, more things like that. Uh, still on top of the turret, lots and lots of things to go on onto the turret. Turret parts, and there's just turret parts again, a lot of PE again involved. And step 25, and we're still on the uh, upper hull. Obviously, this is the attaching of the turret parts again for the uh, automatic um, machine gun. Auto loader and everything in it, still carrying on with that and viewfinders, and then we have the uh, actual part to put the uh, machine gun into. Looks a bit uh, fancy. Another magazine, I presume that is. And all the viewfinders again, and colours it tells you to you to put in. All the clear colours. Machine gun looks quite nice. So hopefully to. Uh, Typical tag and let it all hollowed out, and then the last few parts is attaching the machine gun to the turret, a few more little bits and pieces, and then attaching the turret to the lower hull, and just like that, finished. He says, but yeah, it looks quite a nice build. Not too intensive, but intensive enough, you know, unless you can understand the, um, the instructions. Not like a dragon where you have to sort of have them in my mouth for about four or five days before you start building the kit but this looks nicely detailed and um, fairly straightforward he says I think at the bottom if I'm not mistaken we'll do we'll do the colour call out first before we go on to the actual plastic. I do like this video a uh, colour the actual colour call out which is quite nice isn't it? You know this is the uh, uh, Indonesian Defence Expo, which was in Jakarta in 2012. This is obviously this was, you know, when they uh, had it out on display. Um, don't know. Don't, don't think I'll do that one. I think I'll do probably another one. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. There's quite a few nice ones. And then we have normal German markings, and then we have the uh, German Army. Hypothetical painting number two, and we have the German uh, hypothetical painting three. I think I'll, I think I'll do that one. That looks nice. Get the glare out of it. I think that looks nice, doesn't it? Yeah, I think we'll do that one. But that's again, it's all uh, MIG paints, but actually it gives you MIG and it gives you Tamiya as well. So we need dark yellow, flat black, a light rust, which is a mix of XX68 and six ratio. Fresh or brown and orange, and olive drab. So I'll probably do this one. More than likely. Right. So let's get onto the uh, important part of the kit: the plastic. We'll just start from the top and work our way down and see what we've got. We've got uh, Tamiya in here, have we? But yeah, that's uh, unusual. I thought they'd stop doing that. If it was only Tamiya that did it. Well, straight away you can. <laughs> You can see the quality. You really can see the quality already. The detail is exquisite. Absolutely exquisite. And all the things inside. 
there's any, we can't even see any uh, injector, uh, injector marks, just a couple in there, top of the machine gun thing, but they're inside. As you can see, it's all where it should be. The gun barrel, it's nice, nice gun barrel, but it shouldn't take too much to, to uh, sand it down and take the seam out. We'll see how it goes when I do it. When I do it. I won't rush and buy a gun yet. We'll see. We shall see nearer the time. But that looks nice. If that's uh, an indication of how the quality of the kit is, then uh, yeah, I'll be very, very impressed, as I was with the Brenners. I have a little goodie bag. As uh, we've got poly caps for the wheels, we get rid of that glare. Poly caps for the wheels as normal. But the Tiger seems to do this quite a good idea. A lot of people do with their own, and you know, marking the sprues out with the uh, thing so you don't know where you're going to. Which is a good idea, really good idea. And then we have uh, actual metal cable, looks really nice quality. You can see through. Them. Let me just take it out. Staples on these, aren't they? Well, that was only to me that did staples. But, um, oh dear me. I'm going to get rid of this bloody thing. As you can see, the quality on the. Um, now we'll see if I can get there a bit farther in. We focus. As you can see, the quality on the actual cable as well looks really nice. Even just, even just that's an eye for detail. Things like that, that's that's really nice. So it's often overlooked, things like that. It's not the usual piece of string that they give you in most kits, but uh actual thing that looks like a piece of uh, cable. Now it's getting me back inside the bloody bag now. <laughs> Pretty crisp. Excuse me. And then we have the decals which are uh, Stapled again, right at the very end. So I don't know why that's being stapled like that. Right through the decal, not good, but uh, <coughs> decal look really nice. Not much on there, but uh, really nice. Nice and thin. As you can see, there's uh, nothing around the edges at all. Absolutely nothing. So. Right, so there's all them little bits there, so we'll just pop that. Oh, so it's PE as well, isn't it? Bloody hell. You have the uh, PE, which is which is nice again. Engine grills, little bits and pieces. Very nice, nicely detailed, nice and thin as well. Really nice. Quite impressed with that. So we shall pop all that back into here. Right, and we have lots of clear. Not clear. Uh, I don't want to take this out of the bag, but as you can see, they are clear as well. Lots of uh, clear parts on this kit. For the optics and things like that, I would have thought everything's there. Really nice, really, really nice. Not too much clean up either. Yeah, the under the sprue gets quite thin, so there's not really a great deal of clean up on them, which is good. All right, we have the upper hole. Sorry, the upper hole. We have the uh, the turret. Well, look at this plastic bag, the detail looks superb. It really does look superb. Right, right. So, yeah, so the bottom part, that's, uh, that's the inside of the hull, and that's the bottom of the hull, so, you know, nothing much on there, but, you know, at least there's something. As you can see, it's nicely detailed, lovely markings, lovely clear, clear you know, lines and really nice. I like, I like, the, I like, the, I like the colour of the, uh, the plastic. Really nice heavy plastic as well. 
a bit of weight in it. And the upper hull, so upper hull. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> oh, dear me. Um, let me put the, the upper hull for that. That is superb. Look at the detail on that. That is absolutely amazing. Really non slip texture on that. Absolutely brilliant. I can't argue with that, can we? Keep going the wrong way. That is really, really nice. The detail is exquisite. Really, really is. Even at the other side, the other side of the and it's all one part as well, so it's been beautifully moulded by one part. Things like this you usually think, you know, it'd be two or three parts to build up a, a turret like this, but not just the one part. It's beautifully done. And uh, we're looking at it here, you see it's fit, just drops in. You know, Tamiya, Tamiya esque, it really does just drop in. So that's the uh, the Tourette. and then we are. We'll do the we'll do the uh, the big bulky parts first. <coughs> and then we have the uh, upper hull and lower hull in the same bag again. Let me just get myself comfortable again. And we'll start off with the bottom. There again, lovely markings on the bottom again. Nice detail. The sides, there's a lot of detail to actually put on there as well. A lot of PE parts to go on there. From what I could look at in the, in the, uh, the destructions. Nice, very nice indeed. And like I say, it's, it's a real heavy plastic, and you know, that's going to go nowhere. And then we have the, uh, the size of the hull on this thing. Look at the size of the hull. Now look at the detail. On the non-slip again. Quality is amazing. It's some size tank this. Even the, without the four to etch on there, the, you know, the quality of the, of the moulding on the uh, engine grills. Brilliant. The sides as well, so you can see the sides, even on the sides are little boxes of here, this, that and the other. Details amazing. The front, look at the driver's hatch, the detail on the uh, non slip again is absolutely be brilliant. Oh, it's quite an expensive kit, um, but I think you do pay for some, you know, you do pay for your quality at times, especially when it's like this. Very impressed with that, very, very impressed. And there again. <coughs> It just pops together the poly caps on there as well, so it's quite a quite a big tank really when you think about it. It's quite uh, large. See, my hands are quite hard, small, but uh, it's quite a large tank. Should have popped that back in there. Right, the dreaded tracks. Staples again. Should be more prepared, really, and take. Uh, well, obviously, this one, two, three, four. The six screws also. And as you can see, These are all built up individually. This is going to take a lot of work. You know, these things especially is quite delicate. So be very careful with them. You can see all crispy mold molded as well. Can't see any 
nasty injection marks where they shouldn't be. But this is going to take a long time to build, I would think, the tracks especially. On the rear, yeah, the injection marks on the rear, but you're not going to see them, are we? So, I'm really bothered with the detail on these. Is, uh, the pads, especially again, you know, they've got a bit of texture on the pads, even. Which is nice. These will take a long time to build, but we'll, uh, we'll do it eventually. Oh, let's say there's uh, six screws like that. That's well, going to take a lot of uh, cutting and sanding and fixing together. We well, buy these kits to take two challenges to make sure we're uh, up to it. Right, and then we have another another sprue. Yeah, again, I think they must have been to the Tamiya factory. I think for these. again uh, you know the detail how it's molded <coughs> excuse me but uh, yeah you can't argue with the quality on that kind of the detail on the back plate where we go that's really nice and all the hatches Little bits and pieces, smoke, uh, smoke launches. That's the back side. Is that the back side? Yeah, that's the back side. You see all the injection marks are uh, hidden away. And then we start off with there's a bit of suspension on here. Look, the uh, the actual suspension arm is uh, all one. The uh, the arms, which is nice. That'd be. I've never done one of things like this before with movable suspension, so this will be your first. We'll take our time with this one. But nice again, just the moulding is brilliant. Oh, it's, the, it's the 50 cal. Yeah, and I don't know if you can make it out. I don't think, yes, you can, so I'll put it right. It's been drilled out. Which I would have thought it probably would have been with this. Uh, okay, superb. Nicely detailed as well, but like I say, the gun is going into the uh, into a housing that's at, uh, like a on the top, so you're not really going to see a lot of that. You're going to see only like the tip of it. Still, it's nicely moulded, and with a little bit, is that flash? That's no, just my eyesight. I thought it was flash. Well, is it? No. Can't feel it. No, it's just the mould. There again, see that's the mantlet. If you detailed again. There's not, no, there's not a lot of parts to this kit to be perfectly honest, but what there is is superb. And obviously the tracks is the main part that's going to take a long time to do. I don't think the construction of the tank is going to take too long itself. It'll be just the tracks and. Uh, things like that. And then we have the uh, obviously we have the wheels and the rest of the uh, two sprues exactly the same. So we have nice detail again on the on the on the wheels. You know, solid wheels so they're not gonna be you know the nice rivet heads on the top or bolt heads we want sorry bolt heads not rivet heads and more of the uh, suspension arms The sprocket and the uh, return roller, nicely detailed again. A couple of bits of uh, shovels and cable ties uh, for your cables to go in. Yeah, they're all drilled out as well. For the ready for the cable to go in, which I thought. A few little bits and pieces, aerial there. I can see a few brackets. Nice again. Caps for the wheels, by the looks of it. <laughs> grease nipples on them as well. Interested to build this um, 
workable suspension. That'll be a, that'll be a nice, nice touch on it. And then finally, we have it's like a cage that goes around the back of the uh, rear hull. It's like <coughs> So this is the, uh, the side you're going to see on the actual, it's, like a, it's covered in like a cloth I think, really, but that's the side you're going to see on the outside, uh, the driver's side, so it's got the actual um, non-slip as well on there, a few little bits and pieces, a couple of little handles and other little bits, looks like uh, guards for the wheels on the top, fenders, other bits and pieces. I was reading a review online and they were saying about some pin marks, there's slight some pin marks, you can just make them out there. But that's going to be inside, they're not going to take too long to get out, I think they're actually sunken so they're not going to be too bad, you can just put a blob of uh, thing in there, you can just make them out, I think there's eight, two, four. There again that's going to be on the inside so you're not really going to see it, but they are there, which is a shame. Let's see, you can see the bottom ones there. A shame. But we'll get them out if we need to. Try to put some little thinny, uh, thinny sticks and get that out. Just take a bit of work. I'll dry fit them first and see if we're going to see them before I decide if I want to take them out or not. But, uh, moldings again, absolutely brilliant. And there's the track. Um, Jig for the track there, at the bottom. Oh, I keep going the wrong way. Track jig there for the bottom, so you can make five tracks. Is it five tracks at one go? So it's going to take a long time to do, but you know, don't want to rush things like this. The quality you uh, that's been provided for us. So, all in all, very, very impressed. Very impressed. Let's see, that's the second Tiger model I've got, and. I, can't, I think, personally speaking, they're a better quality than Dragon. A lot better quality than Dragon, and a lot easier instructions to follow. Um, but that's my personal opinion, so you may, you may have other opinions on that, which you're all entitled to have. So that's the end of this review. Um, unboxing, I should say. So I was quite, quite happy with that. So I'd like to thank all my subscribers for subscribing and any new subscribers please click on and see what I've got to offer uh, and see the big thumbs up hit that and leave us some nice comments or bad comments all taken on board um, I think that's about it at the moment I do have a couple of um, I'll have a final reveal of the T55 with a snow plow um, I might do that later on today just a couple of little things to finish on it and on the progression of the uh, the Ultimia Tiger One House E, which is uh, coming along nicely as well. I've got to stay, I've just um, dull coated it, so that's where I'm up to a moment with that. So that'll be on there in the uh, next few few hours if I get uh, time to do them. So this is Greg signing off, and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.